man. I'll tell y'all some shit, man. I want to tell y'all some shit. Give me a second. Matter of fact, I'm going to put my headphones in so we can really talk. Y'all see where I'm at? They go Chase Bank right there. You know, years ago, I was selling weed and shit. I had got fired from Real Housewives of Atlanta because I had started tweeting. My homeboy, Trey, um, he told me, yo, get on Twitter, get on Twitter. I, I think it'd be nice for you. We was working on Real Housewives of Atlanta and I was traveling around. I was, I was out of town like for a year traveling. I, I, I started as a PA and somehow I really got in with the with the film shit. People liked me. I got really good with it. And, you know, I stayed with it. I'm going to go get in the car because I got a story to tell y'all. But I had newborns. And I had my daughter here in New York. Now, I'm flying from D.C. I'm going to Atlanta. Flying around with making a band. Celebrity Apprentice, Donald Trump. I was, I was flying around with them too. You know what I mean? And um, over time, I got, I got, uh, I blew. I, what is it called? I burned out. I burned out on um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. I was, I was just so tired. I had come up to New York to come to my son's birthday party, and they was only like two years old. And they didn't know me. Shit, the shit killed me. They didn't know me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I went back down to work with Real Housewives Atlanta. And I couldn't do it. I just, I literally could not sit there and be away from my children no more. And I was like blacking. I, I cursed out one of the producers on Twitter. At first, I cursed out in person. And then I did it on Twitter and the executive producer, Joy, I don't know if you guys heard of uh, Carlos. He works on all of the uh, Real Housewives and shit like that now. Um, you know, I got fired from the show. They pulled up all of my tweets. Apparently, the producer that I cursed out was actually following me on Twitter. And I was on Twitter talking about it. I said that her glasses make her look like a fly. Her hair was crazy. I did all of this shit. I cursed her the fuck out. And um, she 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 saw the tweets, and she printed them out, and she brought them to a black woman, you know. But I shouldn't have said that she like a fly, so I'm not even mad at her, cause who the fuck wants to read some shit like that? You know what I mean? My problem with her was, at the time, very quickly. My problem with her was she would treat me different than the white people on the show. You know, I have a specific job to do what I do well, but she want me to do other people's jobs. She always wanted me to take less of, of a break than everybody else. She always like, it's like, yo, you're not treating me according to my job status. Like I have a title here that I, you don't treat me like everybody else. Like just because we black, I'm supposed to understand. Like, no, I want the same respect as my white counterparts. You understand what I'm saying? And she wouldn't give me that. She would. She would always want me to go park the car and you know get people's lunch. You know, hold up, ma. I'm working camera. I'm a cameraman. Like, don't have me out here getting people. I'll do it once in a while because I know you need help. But don't. You ain't asking uh, a dick to go get nobody's fucking lunch or go fucking park the car because we black. I'm supposed to keep looking out. Like, respect my fucking the hierarchy here. And that's with all due respect to you as a black woman, because I will help, but it, it, it's given that you kind of looking down on me or treating me away because we black. I ain't like that. So I was blacking on her one day because she, you know, and I printed, you know, I was on Twitter blacking. And this was really all about, because I, I, I can be patient. I know how to switch codes very well when it comes to work. At work, I'm just very even kill. Um, but I was just stressing because... You got to imagine me going back to New York to celebrate my son's birthday and they didn't want to hug me. They didn't want to stop and talk to me. They, it was, first of all, how I felt to myself, but it's embarrassing. 
You know, my family's there, her family's there, and I'm trying to hold them while they sing a happy birthday, and they want to go run to grandma and grandpa, and that shit broke my fucking heart, bro. So I went back to Atlanta, and I couldn't stay there. I had to come home. Um, and over time, I wound up getting, uh, you know, very shortly after that, I started selling weed and shit, because I ain't really have nothing going on. That's when I was searching for my... Um, the, the daughter that I thought was my daughter That's not my daughter um, And my mother was diagn diagnosed with cancer and My mother was diagnosed with cancer bro I threw such a fucking fit bro I threw a fit bro I went to Brownsville I bought a bottle of P Patron I was on 6th Avenue in the city I bought a bottle of P Patron I drank the whole bottle outside on the bench I fucking th went to Brownsville Almost got jumped by like three dudes I threw a bottle I threw the bottle at them niggas They almost jumped me But they Somebody I was like furious And somebody like stopped it And then I fell asleep on a On a, on a project bench It wasn't even my projects I wasn't even supposed to be over there but I was like, I felt so lost in the fact that my mother just told me she had cancer. Like I was, I didn't know how to deal with that type of, you know what I mean? Especially with our relationship, because it's like, do you really, like as much as you don't like somebody you love, right? Imagine, can you imagine losing them, knowing you love them and they left in a time, in a place where you wasn't able to show them that you love them, that it was all like a misunderstanding or like, you know, it, it's, 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 for me at that time, I just I just was like, damn, bro, like I've I've wasted this life. I, I didn't do what I was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like that's how I felt. That I didn't do what I was supposed to do with life. When when she told me that she had cancer, I was like, damn, she has to leave like this. Like this, like this, between us, like this. And I, I didn't like that. You know what I mean? So At the time, I was hustling. You know, I wound up making it to my family's house and my mother told me she had cancer. And, and, you know, it was only stage two. I didn't understand stage two, stage three, stage four. Um, but my mother was like, listen, I want you to take this house because I don't want it, me, something to happen to me and then the state take it or the city take it or, you know, anything like that. So I want you to take the house. And I'm like, yo, I sell a couple pounds of weed. Like, okay, but I don't have no real, can you own a house if you sell weed? Like, I didn't know. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't, I didn't know. Like, can you do that? <laughs> and I, I remember around the time I had a worker. He's still out there. His name is Fat Boy, and Fat Boy just did not know how to hustle, bro. He would have people waiting for an hour, two hours. Now I'm too old to be sitting outside selling weed, so I had my work outside. But they calling me like, "Yo, where your man? I hit him an hour ago. He said he's on his way. This nigga, like, he just leaving them on the corner. He off smoking somewhere, sleep, eating, jerking off, they eat, they eating. Like, like I said, the guy said eating twice because his name is Fat Boy. You know what I'm saying? Fat Boy finds his way to go hustle in somebody else's block. These niggas rob him, but I know them. They friends of mine, but they robbed them like twice. And I kept telling you, the nigga work for me. Don't rob my man because that's going to come back on me. That's my work. So when they robbed them, I came outside and I was like, yo, I'm going to have to fire on these niggas because they I have been out the street for so long. They must not remember how I give it up with my hammer. So I'm going to have to fire on these niggas. And then we talk because a lot of times you got to show strength first in the street. You can, all that talking and all that, like it's too much talk, too much talk. It's too much talk. So sometimes you got to give it up first and then talk because nobody really wants to go do some foul shit. So, you, you know, sometimes you got to show first and then calm down. You can't you can't ask for peace with somebody that wants war from you. You can't ask for peace with somebody that wants war from you. You got to make them want peace, too. You know, what I mean, that's that's how it was me in the street. You know, war first. And we talk later. I go in the house. And I'm telling them, all right, I'm going to send you around this corner with the gun. I'm going to come around that corner with the gun. We're going to cross them. We're going to cross fire. We're going to shoot at them, whatever. We ain't got to kill nobody. We're going to scare the shit out of them niggas. And then we'll figure it out later. But I am two to three years out of prison. I'm not really a street nigga no more. I just felt that this is what I had to do to be in the street. I'm not a street nigga no more, though. This is not who I am anymore. But I felt this is what I had to do. You know what I mean? Um, to protect what I have Because I got to pay these bills With this house And shit like that Flashback To years before When I came home from prison My baby mother got me A uh, application Or I got the application From the streets 
and I put it on the table at home to sanitation. Um, my baby mother paid for the shit. She paid for it because I had just come home and I was working at Columbia Coffee Shop or some shit, whatever I was doing. And she paid for it and she sent it in and everything. But that was around the time when the recession hit. And when the recession hit, the city stopped hiring completely. So four years went by. It's funny because I remember the day that my sons were born, the day that my son's baby shower was the same day they, they send in the card saying that, hey, this is where you gotta go take a sanitation test. It was the same day as my son's baby shower. And it was at five o'clock at night. The test was at five o'clock at night. And of course the baby shower is at night. So I'm like, I'm not going to take no sanitation test and miss my son's baby shower. Like, no. And everybody, my friends, my mom, my BM, of course she didn't want me there because me and her didn't get along. <laughs> so, but we were still together. But she was like, oh, go. And I was like, you just don't want me there, bitch. Fuck you. But everybody's like, son, this is a great opportunity. Don't miss out on it. You know, everybody's telling me go. So I missed the baby shower. I wasn't there. I was taking the sanitation test during my son's baby shower. And all my friends had run up to the Bronx to go to the baby shower. This is going somewhere. So, you know, stay tuned. You know what I'm saying? So all my friends is at the baby shower. I come walking in at night and everybody's leaving. It was a five-hour sanitation test. A five-hour sanitation test, bro. And by the time I get there, it's like 11, after I leave. So it's 5 to 10. By the time I leave there, it's almost 11 o'clock. Everybody's leaving. I'm there just in time. To do what? Take out the trash. Everybody's leaving. Yo, that was great, Tao. Congratulations. We got to go back to Brooklyn. It's 11 o'clock night. Everybody's leaving. I'm walking in like... And then the city stopped hiring because of the recession years ago. Fast forward to the niggas that robbed my little man, Fat Boy. We was, we was loading up guns. Danny Brown, you in here right now. You asked Fat Boy if the story's true. We was loading up guns, bro. And I was ready to go fire on the niggas that robbed him. And my phone rings. Four years later, four years later, I promise you, I kid you not, four years later, my phone rings. And a lady from sanitation says, hey, may I speak to such and such? And I said, yes, this, this is he. Now, my, somebody's calling your phone saying the sanitation is four years later. I'm like, did I leave a garbage bag somewhere that I don't know about? Like, how the fuck did y'all, what are y'all calling my phone for? Like, I don't know, what, what, what's going on? Why is sanitation calling my phone? Like, I, am I getting a ticket? And they're like, uh, are you ready to start working? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, you took the test four years ago. We're back hiring. Um... Are you ready to start working? Keep in mind, I got a gun in my hand. My little nigga's on the couch, loading the gun or bagging up weed or whatever. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, uh, we're hiring, you start Monday. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I literally was like, huh? And I said, when do you start getting paid? Because during the hiring for sanitation, you got to go in for medical. That takes another year. Then you go in for the physical test. That takes another year. And then he's like, yo, like, what, what y'all calling me for now? Like, y'all been jerking me off for three years. Like, I'm ready to, like, come on, right? And I got a gun in my hand. I literally have a gun in my hand that I knew I did not want to do, but I felt I had to because niggas was robbing my man. And I'm like, all right, so you niggas not respecting the game. I'm going to have to do what I got to do. And she said, you start getting paid Monday. You get paid every week. You get paid next Friday or two Fridays from now. And I'm like, um, for how long? She's like, you're hired. Little brother, you're hired. She was black. I could tell she was black. And she says, bro, you're hired. If you come to work on Monday, you're hired. And I start crying. I literally looked at my little man, Shane. And I said, yo, take the weed. It's yours. You don't, work for, you don't work for me no more. Because I felt it wasn't about the gun. It was about divine timing, like y'all said. It was about like something happened just now where God said no. Something happened where God said no, right? Pardon me if I get choked up because y'all know I cry a lot. I'm a bitch, so I cry a lot. But something happened where God said no. He was like, what? And I was like, take the game. You got the game. And I was able to 
Take care of my mom, you know what I mean? I saw her through cancer. I saw her beat it, you know what I mean? And I was able to have this job that I fought for. The story with this comes so much more. I fought for that shit, bro. But at the same time, when you're a rookie of sanitation, you get paid pennies. You get paid pennies. Like, they make you, they, they starve your ass, nigga. I remember I was getting paid like $280 a week. And these motherfuckers telling me this is the best job you ever had. Trust me, this is the best job. And I'm like, how? $280 a week? I can't even put gas in my plane. How? How? You got to imagine I'm coming from a lifestyle where I'm making thousands a day. Thousands. Not alone in the street, but in film. Like they're paying me $600, $700 a day. Right? Like even $400. Maybe I was because I was a camera assistant. Maybe $400 a day. So I'm still making $2,500, $2,600 a week. Then I'm selling pounds of weed. I'm making thousands a week. Thousands. Making three hundred dollars trying to do the same right thing, so I remember I had this Hawaiian chick. She came to meet me from Hawaiian, from Hawaii, and I was starting to sell nutcrackers because I needed to supplement the three hundred dollars a week, but I didn't want to get arrested. So I was like, I could sell these little nutcrackers. Shout out to my boy West, Sucker Free West. He taught me how to make the, the the shits. He didn't show me, but he told me. And once he told me, I just lock on. That's what I do. I do the math very quickly. The, 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 I swear to God, I do the math. And once he told me. And I figured, oh, that's how you, all right, boom. I went and did the research and I, I went to the, to the liquor store and I talked to the niggas at the liquor store like I knew what I was doing. I was like, yeah, I'm trying to bash them in. And he started just putting shit on the table. Oh, you need this and then you need this and then you need this. Oh, you, you're doing it like this? Yeah, I'm, you're going to need some of this. You're making margarita. I mean, you just, boom. So I knew how to make nutcrackers now. But everybody was making nutcrackers. Everybody was making fucking nutcrackers. So it was like, I don't like being another nigga. I never liked being another nigga. Even when I was in the street, when everybody else was buying cook up crack, that means they put in mad baking soda. The, the niggas who's selling the shit, the weight man, they put water on the shit to make it heavy. They put more baking soda on the shit to make it to stretch longer. But the crackheads hate it. The crackheads smoke the shit, the shit on fire while they blow. They light it, the shit like. The shit is on fire because it got so much shit in it. That is not really crack no more, <laughs> right? And I hated that because on my block, it was 25 of us. It was 30 of us. If you're talking about from Nostrand or even Herkimer, down to my block, there was 40, 50 hustlers. Everybody selling crack. And it was enough crackheads for everybody, but you standing there for mad long, and I didn't like that. I need to feel special. That's how I am. So what happened was I moved in with a crackhead, and she taught me how to cook up crack. And what I did was I burnt all of the baking soda out of it and I made it like free base. So I got less from everything that I made, but it sold like that. So while everybody's trying to get rid of their cook up, my shit is going because my shit is like pure Coke crack. My shit was pure. So while everybody, you might be making more than me in the long run, but I'm burning through my shit so fast, I'm tripling what you made. Because they can't get enough of this shit. It's like snowfall. You feel me? So that's how I took with the nut with the nutcracker game. I didn't like it and it was taking too long to get rid of my shit. I don't want to be standing next to another nigga that's hustling and we trying to figure out who gonna take a little three, four, five dollars, ten dollars. Man, I don't like that. I, that's why I get to want to get you out of here because I don't even like like bartering a hustle a, 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 a sale with a nigga. Like that's not my body. The Hawaiian chick was like, well, why you don't turn it up? Somebody, we was out one day and somebody drove past me. I never tell this story. I always lie and act like I was the first one. But there was a woman who pulled up on me and my man Ron Du. She was in the back of her car. I'm hot as shit. She was in the back of her car and she opened the back of her car and she was making these pineapple drinks. And she sold me one. And if you go back and look into my stories, all the way back, go back years, you're going to see me with this pineapple on my stoop, on my steps, and it's blue. The drinks inside of it is blue. That's the first pineapple that I bought. And I was with this Hawaiian chick at the time. And she said, I know how to do that. And I'm like, what do you mean? She was like, all you got to do is get a pineapple corer 
and that is that's inside of it that's the blue liqueur that you make with your, your your nutcrackers and you put it in this but what you should do don't put your nutcrackers in this make your own drinks you have boogers thank you thank you Dodge appreciate that stopping me to make sure that I get the boogers out my nose I appreciate it am I am I good now hmm because I believe that's a gray hair, baby. I'm actually 70 years old, so that happens. You'll, you'll see when you get older. Grays come out of everywhere, okay? You might shit grays, you know what I mean? But only Gunner will see that you know, if he's fucking you right. Um, she said, make your own drinks. Because all these other niggas is selling nutcrackers. So why would you sell nutcrackers? Make your own specialty drinks that nobody else have. You know what I mean? And she showed me how to do it, bro. She took me to the liquor store, this Hawaiian woman. Um, and she showed me how to make specialty drinks. Same as Dodge, you feel me? Really dope ass drinks. She said, this is how you get them because nobody else is gonna have these. And bro, when I tell you, I went to the, to the, to the park with them. Niggas in the park ain't want no pineapple drinks. They just wanted they simple ass you know, this is before anybody was selling pineapple drinks in New York. Anybody. She took me to the park. We went to the park and niggas wasn't doing it because niggas had their things. And I was like, yo, but what's the aesthetic on these pineapple drinks? Because I see they fly, but niggas ain't on it like that. I said, let's go to the beach. So I went to the beach. She wound up going home and I went to the beach. And I, w I tell you no lie, bro. I walked around that beach with one pineapple in my hand asking people you want to buy a pineapple drink you want to buy a pineapple drink you want to buy a pineapple drink but i'm a hustler nobody wanted a pineapple drink nobody so i'm looking and i'm trying to figure out the game and i said i got him i'm gonna give this shit away because the game with the pineapple is that you gotta see you make it so i picked a crew of people white people and uh atmosphere where there was mad other people they might have been spanish as a matter of fact pardon me they might have been spanish and i walked up to their crew it might have been five six seven of them and i said can i make this drink for you for free i'm gonna make this drink for you for free and if you like it you can tip me but you don't have to but i need to make this drink so everybody sees me making this drink and you know they over there the dudes are so cool they just they're like go ahead homie make the drink homie go ahead and the chicks is like mm, yeah whatever but you know i'm black they spanish it's like there wasn't no real draw for them at the time i don't really get spanish chicks like that but you know it's cool um i think i'm too brown i think they like dark skin dude what or light skin i don't know whatever but i'm brown i don't get the draw but anyway i sat my thing down on the table I start cutting up the pineapple. And as soon as you pull the pineapple out, they looking like, yo. So you got the core of the pineapple, you pull the pineapple out, boom, they like, yo. I start pouring the drinks in there, the shit blew. Pouring the drinks in there. Then I take out the rainbow straw, put it in there. Then the umbrella, boom. Then I start hitting it with the fucking strawberries and, and, and decorating the shit with fucking pineapples around the shit. All the bitches. All the bitches, bro. Them bitches laying on the beach like this, all them bitches is like, what the fuck? Yeah, got him, nigga. The people over there, they looking. The people over there, they looking. Everybody, the nigga like, yo, I want one too. People over there like, yo, let me get two of them. I give the girl a bottle, the, the thing. She go in her pocket. She like, nah, I can't give you this for free. Give me $10, homie. Give me $10. And they start tipping me and shit. Nigga, by the time I sold that one drink, I had 20, 30 sales. And then every time I went somewhere else, somebody, 10 more people wanted it. Two hours later, I sold 200 pineapples, my nigga. I had $800 in my pocket. Maybe 100, maybe 100 pineapples. I had $890 in my pocket the first day I went to the beach, bro. I managed to keep one. And I sat my my chair, I sat on the cooler at the end of the beach towards the water. And I sat there and drank it. Because you got to feel like success. I'm by myself. I was by myself. And there's nobody to see this. I'm just by myself. And I just sat there and I'm just exhausted. I'm tanned. I'm burned. I'm sweating. And I'm just looking at the water like, 
Because you got to remember I was a hustler. And this is that feeling again. This is that dance you do with the fiends in the street. This is that dance you're doing when you're cooking up the crack. This is that dance you're doing when you're bagging the shit up. And I'm sitting there like, I got him. I got him. I know it. I got him. And for a while, I was going out there and I was making $1,200 a day. $1,300, $1,400. No matter where I went. And the, and the funny shit is, when I first went out there, they was telling me, $10 ain't enough. I was, I, I was selling it for $10. And they was like, nah, homie. You got to sell this for more than $10. This is worth more than $10. And they said uh, they said to me, I'm going to pay you $20, bro. You got to charge $20 for these drinks. And I started charging $20 for the drinks. And then they would tip me as well. So I'm walking away now with $25. And they, the customers told me, I have to give you more than $10. The customers told me that. Facts. Facts. I would walk away to the beach with thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. Long story short, before this shit cut off, because this is going somewhere, is that I wound up getting arrested because you're not supposed to sell liquor. And I, I, I they put me in handcuffs and they had my pineapple scattered all over the beach. They put me in handcuffs. This is a couple years later, and they they uh, took me to the precinct on the beach, the fucking beach police. And I'm sitting there. And they wrote out a citation. I didn't know what I was doing, but I'm in this cold ass fucking thing with handcuffs on and I'm like hell no bro I'm not going back to prison bro like for what for fucking selling drinks I'm not going through no system I'm not ducking no fucking police this is a business my nigga you gotta start thinking like a business stop being a hustler all your life you built better than that nigga and so I said to myself I know hold on because a nigga that I work with owned a bar called Therapy Wine Bar and I knew that we had a good rapport because he liked getting chicks. I liked getting chicks. So I went to him one day. I said, yo, give me your worst day at your bar. And let me show you what I could do. And I'm figuring everybody got a worst day. I'm like, let me just show you what I could do. I went in there. I did the presentation for him. He was like, well, you know. And I was like, let me show you what I could do. And that was a Wednesday. He said, well, Wednesday is kind of light. I said, let me get this. Let me come in there and, and show you the game on Wednesday. And when I tell you, y'all motherfuckers showed the fuck out. We packed his shit every fucking day. Wednesday to the point where it became the biggest day of the week. His Wednesday became it the Wednesday got so good that Thursday and Tuesday got good because people kept fucking up. You know, we don't know nothing. And we ain't thinking about nothing. People was coming on Tuesday looking for the pineapple. People coming on Thursday looking for the pineapple. And this motherfucker being the hustler that he is, although it went against our deal, because our deal was I won't sell this shit in no surrounding clubs, no surrounding bars, if you don't try to take my shit, because I got the wave. Sure as shit, he was seeing the money getting turned down on Tuesday and Thursday. What'd he do? Start bringing pineapples in there. And people told me, yo, he be having pineapples in here. And I was like, all right. So I told him, you know, it's that and the other. He did it again and again, and I, I quit. Matter of fact, his partner, it's so funny, his partner called me and was like, yo, work next door at Beso. There's another restaurant right next door that his partner was DJing at. I went to Beso because since you violated me, I'm going to go violate you back. I went right to Baco and I took the whole wave with me. I took the whole wave with me. So from them having Wednesday and Tuesday and Thursday, they all going next door to Baso now. I'm the Pied Piper, nigga. The Pineapple Piper. Nigga. The Pineapple Piper. Nigga. I'm out here. And I'd come outside and I'd look at her with my motherfucking pineapple. Motherfucker. We friends now, but that's how it went. We, I love the nigga now, but that's how it went. We had pineapple beef. Nigga. And I tried to work with Beso, but the lady there, she didn't know how to pay. So now we getting all this money that's coming in cash. Don't hit my shit, bro. This shit just got paid. Yo, come on, motherfucker. I just paid for this. She didn't know how to give me my money, bro. Now we getting paid in cash. Beso lady, she want to pay me two, three weeks later, but I got to work there every week. So now I got to keep going into my pocket to restock pineapple, restock liquor. When you got my money from last week. So I couldn't work there neither. Long story long, I quit. And I was kind of over it. Until somebody said to me, yo, why you don't go to this spot around the corner? Treehouse. I don't know, bro. I don't know why I'm such a pussy, bro. But I... 
This treehouse became the home of some dope shit, bro. For years. We, we, we rocked out. Me and this old Jamaican man rocked the fuck out, bro. Dodge used to come. Everybody in here was there, bro. Tax used to show up. Scrooge would come. Scrooge wasn't even drinking at the time. And Scrooge would just buy two pineapples and like, just give them to people. Y'all don't know Scrooge, but I love this nigga. He like kind of in the background. He stays in the background. If you go listen to Heart of Soft, he's on there. But he's just a dope-ass Brooklyn nigga. Just a dope-ass. And he would just come and buy pineapples. And Vok would come, but he wouldn't buy no pineapples. It's just... It's just a story that I got to tell. Pineapple Express got so big that the building department wound up coming down and shutting Treehouse backyard down so we couldn't do it no more. Because I turned Treehouse from just this little ass spot into a really chill spot that everybody wanted to go to. Right? For years, I just didn't want to do it no more. You guys would be like, yo, come back. Do Pineapple Express, do Pineapple Express. And I'm like, yo, I'm never going to get a feeling like Treehouse. I'm never going to get a feeling like Treehouse again. And I passed their Treehouse a couple months ago. And it was closed. And shit hurt. And it hurt for several reasons. Because like, damn, bro. Like, because I was He got this influx of business. But because I'm not there. He wasn't getting that business no more. And because I'm not there. I wasn't. I, damn, bro. I felt the way And I went to call his phone And the shit went to voicemail Or it, it was like Doo 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 This number's off And I would pass all the time And the shit wasn't It was closed I felt bad son Cause I'm like Damn why you ain't just give it to me I would've did something with that You feel me I went past there About a month and a half ago About a month ago I'm seeing 11, 11 everywhere. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, Damn to this day I will see 11, 11s With ain't gonna goddamn numbers it don't make no sense. I'm looking at the fucking street right now. 11 of fucking 11 in the goddamn crosswalk. I see it everywhere. It's about manifestation and belief and knowing that you can do some shit. That's what 11 11 is. I'm passing down fucking Marcus Garvey one day. I see this old ass man and I know that walk. And I walked up behind him and I said, yo, you old motherfucker, you closed tree house. And he turns around and he goes, yo, I was looking for you. Why you don't answer my call? And I'm like, nigga, I've been calling you. It's him. And I'm like, nigga, you, you, you know what I mean? And he's like, yo, you don't understand. It's been hard, you know. I had to close the business. I tried to give it to my son. And I'm like, why you ain't give it to me? He's like, I tried to give it to my son. No, it's my son. And, but I wanted to give it to you. And I'm like, what you mean? He's like, I was calling you, but you don't, I changed my number. I forgot I changed my number. You probably don't know the call. And you know what I mean? I'm, you was the one who turned this business into what it is. He said to me, yo, but my son can't run it. My son lives in Canada. And he said, do you want it? No. Oh. So, here I am at Chase Bank. About to get this man all this money for my new restaurant. Sometimes I can't believe I'm so blessed. Sometimes I can't believe after everything that I've been through that God still cares, you know, about me. It still sees me. It still sees me. I've been sitting out this fucking bank, outside this bank for about an hour. They said, 
here. I'm just sitting here. And Chloe, I am dramatic. And it's cause I remember when a nigga that I grew up with pointed at me and said, you shot me in front of a room full of white people and said that I shot him and he was sitting on the stand and I was in the custody of the New York State Police and I didn't shoot him. And I thought my life was over. I thought my life was over. And I remember feeling guilty for a million things. And I think it's the reason why I hate having so much, you know, fucked up shit in my life where I have these disagreements with people is because I don't mean harm, you know what I mean? So I just hate that component. And I always try to fix it. I always want to fix it. I always want to fix things. I always want to love on people. It's because I just be wanting God to just see me as the person I am. But every once in a while, he nods his head. And he says, yo, I got you. Don't worry. So, I got to get a liquor license. And I'm about to, I'm trying, I'm looking for chefs. You know? Because I want to build the baddest, sexiest, dopest fucking atmosphere in the world. I'm gonna go get this man this bunny today. I just want to let y'all know that anything is fucking possible. Anything. 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 Anything you fucking want is possible. Just pay attention to the omens. Stay humble. Keep your fucking head up. Stay clean. Smile. Smile at people. Smile at people. Do things bigger than yourself, better than yourself. Don't don't be selfish. Be happy for people. Show love, man. Be honest, man. Even about the negative shit, be honest, man. One of the worst things in life is for a motherfucker to call me a liar. I hate, I hate, I hate. Cause I'ma give you real shit, nigga. You're not, you're not going, you might not like it. I'm going to tell you the real shit. You might not like it, but I'm going to give you, I'm never going to hide, I'm never going to hide your reality from you, my reality from you. So I kind of don't like being called a liar. I hate it, I hate it. I want you to dream for yourself. One of my, one of my, one of my patients said today that she feels like she has a lack of uh, sustenance in her life. She's just living. And I said, that's because you need soul food. You need soul food. You got to do something for you. We do so much working and serving and paying Con Ed and Georgia Power and this and that and getting Metro cards for 170 fucking dollars. And everything is serving something, but it's not serving us. You got to do something for you. Do something for you. Get some soul food. Get some soul food. I gotta check the right.